Amen. Amen. My brother, in peace of the Lord, we're going to open our Bibles in Matthew, chapter 14, and we're going to read from verse 22, Matthew 14, verse 22 onwards. Thus says the word of the Lord. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region, brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the rim of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Amen. My brethren, this text is it's a text that is very well known by all of us. It's well known because it's a text that speaks about an experience of the disciples, an experience that was uh, a landmark in the life of the disciples. Truly, was an experience that confirmed their, the call of the disciples and gave them a guarantee, an assurance of who Jesus truly was. And in the same way, Jesus also was able to show to the disciples and to bring a teaching to their lives. And this same teaching the Lord has brought to our lives, for the moment in which we are called, that we are taken away from the world, and is given to us the opportunity to know salvation Jesus, to know this new life, to know the mysteries of God, we are not called simply to be participants, or I could even use another word, or just admirers, you know, just to watching what is happening. No. The Lord calls men to be fishermen of men. We have been called to fish men. And what does it mean? That we need to throw the net. We need to work. We need to go and take care of things. Who amongst us knows about fishing? I could even ask John to give you an explanation about fishing and what is, how hard it is to, to go out. It's easy for you to get home and fish is there, but, but there is a, a labor, there is a preparation, there is a dedication. From the moment in which, oh, you say, today I'm going to the sea, I'm going to fish. 
and then there is a there starts a preparation and when you arrive there uh, right back uh, actually when you go to the boat you need to clean up the the tools that you use the boat otherwise the salt water destroys everything so working with fishing is not easy and in the same way the church of the lord it needs to be prepared and willing to work with men amen so we are going to see here jesus he was in verse 22 he was was there in the midst of the multitude preaching for the multitude and now jesus turns to the disciples and says you will go ahead pick up the boat go ahead and cross the the river it was lake it was called a uh, sea but it was in that actually a river a lake so jesus says goodbye to the, the disciples and goes into the the, the disciples went to the boat and Jesus stayed back to pray for the people that were there and people that wanted to more, more, know more of Jesus and now Jesus stays praying and the disciples go away into the boat they go alone and late, late at night the Bible says that it was very late and Jesus meets with them on the fourth vigil of the night, around three, between three, four, or five o'clock in the morning, that's that's when Jesus met with them. So they they stayed from the beginning of the night, it turned midnight, it went all the way to the early dawn, and they were still in the boat. And it's interesting that before Jesus met with them once again, what happened during this moment? A great storm arrived. A strong wind and they there they began to become worried afraid and imagine that situation hours earlier when they were fine Jesus with them there was calm King Jesus the master the Messiah the son of God healing everyone doing the work of the father the sick were healed, the paralytic, the one who was hungry, whoever came to Jesus, there was no problem. But now the disciples of Jesus, the ones that were closest to Jesus, the ones who were being prepared to give continuity to what Jesus was doing, they now they were facing a great problem. A problem with nature, a problem with this life. A problem that could even take their lives away. So now imagine that, that a difficult situation, those men in the boat. And no, Peter was a fisherman. He, they knew how it was to take care of dealing with situations like this. For sure, it was not the first time that Peter and the, the other fishermen had to face a great storm. But that moment there was really scary for them. But later on, late in the night, in there when this difficult situation, afraid, then appear a person walking above the waters. And the Bible says that they were thinking that it was a ghost. They didn't know because it was very dark there. They could not discern that it was Jesus. They were looking. Everyone, no. it's a dog eat dog, it person, you save yourself. No, nobody's taking care of it, each other. So in the boat, everybody's like that. For sure, that shouting and everybody's afraid. But then Jesus says, "Look," and so. Paul says, oh, I don't want to scare anyone here, but there is someone walking on the waters. So when they really look and when they go back and start watching that scene, a man walking on top of the waters and they were all afraid, some people said, oh, it must be a ghost. So then they began to scream, now I'm afraid. Afraid of seeing the scene, the, the fear of seeing the scene was 
even greater than the fear they were feeling because of the storm. So when Jesus saw the situation, he says, be a good cheer. It's me. Do not be afraid. My brethren, I can't even imagine the relief that those disciples felt when they, once again, they were able to see Jesus. I imagine the, the relief. I imagine, imagine the, the expression of joy, the fear going away, the scare going away. So now what they had, once again, was Jesus near them. And Peter, oh, it's Peter, right? Peter, very hasty, he goes and says, Jesus, if it is really you, no, call me so that I can walk on the waters as well. So then Jesus said, come, Peter. I was, I, I assumed that Peter didn't expect Jesus to say that. So then Peter gets out of the boat, start, jumps on the water and begins to walk. When, but when he realized what he was doing, I believe that fear came back to his heart and he begins to sink. And now Jesus comes and rescues the lover Peter and he says, Why were you afraid? Man of small faith, why did you doubt? And my brethren, the Lord Jesus, he calls us to perform a work. And we have had all the resource from the part of the Lord. We have the word of God at the means of grace. We have the seminaries that are given to us, give us all the means, all the teaching, all the ecclesiastic teaching so that we may learn how to communicate with God so that we may be heard by God, so that we may have fellowship with God. And we have everything, all the resource from the part of the Lord. The services. Oh, we cannot have service in the church. Well, but now, now we have virtual service. Who could have imagined something like this? But many years ago, the Lord was already preparing us for, for this. There was a great investment of resources so that we have the structure that we have. So then the virtual service is here. What a blessing. God is the one who knows everything. He knows our future. He knows today. He knows what we did in the past. But above all, God is with us. We are not alone. And what, what I want to say with this is that Jesus was with the, the disciples. They needed to be prepared in order to continue with that mission. They needed to have the experiences, their own personal experiences. They cannot just be watching Jesus doing things and they around it trying to you know, surround Jesus and say, oh, who's next? No, that was not only their role. They needed to seek the Lord. They needed to be prepared in order to do what Jesus was doing. But they would only be able to learn while they practiced it in their daily lives. Because man, just because about when man hears uh, about something, man ends up scared, uh, forgetting. Like we, what we said on Sunday, there's, we speak about the Emos walk when they, the disciples forgot about everything that Jesus did. And you know what Jesus did to them? Jesus said, oh, you're slow in your understanding of the things of God. You forget things very easily. So let's go back to the Word. So then Jesus begins to speak with the, with them from Moses to Genesis all the way to Revelation. And Jesus spent six miles, about seven miles, speaking with them and showing to them that the life of man needs to be based on the Word. We need to be geared towards the Word. We need to leave the Word. Our eyes will only be open. And we will only be victorious if we have our eyes gazing to the Word. And now in the Word, Jesus speaks to Peter. Peter, why did you doubt? Why did you allow fear to take a hold of your heart when you were walking upon the waters towards me? You know, brother, Jesus, He needs, and He gives. 
God gives to man the opportunity of man to place, put in practice what he, man has learned. That's what we see here. Jesus was with them, and but they go ahead. Jesus knew what were, they were going to face, for sure. Jesus is all-knowing. Jesus knew exactly what the, exactly the experience that we're going to go through, the storm that was coming. But they needed to face this. They needed to go through this. They needed to live through this. Because if they had given another, demonstrated, have, if they had shown another behavior, they may have overcome the storm. But the project of God is so complete because today the Lord can bring us the teaching. He can bring us the teaching. He can allow us to leave the teaching and to show to us later on what is going to be the result of, your, of our experience. Because whoever is in Jesus, every man who is in Jesus will be victorious. That's why, my brethren, we need to put in practice what we have heard. We have been learning what we are going through in the churches, what we, the experience that we are, had, we are having with this spiritual experience, because the Son of God spends more time outside of the church, more time with the family, more time at work, more time with, with the things of the life, of this life, than with the things of the church, instead of this spiritual environment where we are right now. Why? Because it's out, out there that we need to show who we are. It is out there that we need to show who we truly are, who the church, the body of Christ truly is. And we'll see experiences like this that was that were given to the disciples many times. <laughs> the Lord Jesus allowed man to work on his own. And God kept waiting. See another experience, Lazarus, when Lazarus was dead. First he was sick, and then he, his sisters were desperate and asked, call Jesus, call Jesus quickly, because Lazarus is sick. How many days it took for Jesus to arrive there? Many days. When Jesus arrived, <coughs> Lazarus was already dead for four days, and he had been buried for four days. You understand what I mean? God gives us opportunities for us to show to Him, for us to exercise our own faith. You know, the same, the two disciples on the way to Emos, same thing. So we, if we look at the Word of God, God not only gives us the teaching, God not only God not only God shows the path without going straight to the left or to the right, but man also needs to walk on this path. Man needs to walk, I could say, alone, but he has to have the initiative, the intention to walk. But in truth, in fact, we are not alone because God is always observing us. God is always watching us. The angels of the Lord are around us. The word of the Lord says that the reign of the Lord camp around the ones who love and fear the Lord. And so, my brethren, based on the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given us, speaking about the night, about darkness, people that are speaking, speaking, spoke even about a man that is experiencing the gospel, that knows the gospel, but in the moment of his trials and tribulations, he falters, he forgets, he allow the fear and the panic to enter and he loses the blessing. But what the Lord has for us is that we need to put in practice what we have received from the part of the Lord. God even gave a vision of a, of a group, an army, of soldiers, saw a general that was giving orders to his army and saying, march towards the sun, oh, a walk of three days. And I saw that a couple of soldiers went there prepared. They brought water, light, and others didn't. But when the night came, the ones who were not prepared ended up in the darkness and thirsty. While the, the others who were prepared, they marched quickly and healthy. 
And, and do you see that? It's exactly this. If you, today, you are living the gospel, you are living this work of the Holy Spirit, you need to put in practice what you have received from the Lord. A soldier is highly prepared. He, a soldier wakes up early, 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, Lord of mercy. I'm happy because I have another activity. Because if I had to wake up every day at 5 o'clock in the morning, go out running and going up the mountains, jump into cold water, preparation of a soldier is is really great because a soldier needs to be highly trained in order to face the cold and the jungle and the ice so it's not easy and the people of God also is being prepared by God but the difference is the following our battle is a battle that has already been won by our God the church of God fights a battle that's already favorable to us. The servant of God that has faith, truly faith in their hearts, son of God that lives the gospel, lives the word, he faces the battle with the victory in their hands. It's just a matter of time. To many, it's a matter of hours. To others, days, weeks. But the faithful servant knows one thing, that the victory will come may last a night. The tears may last a night, but the joy comes in the morning. That's the promise of God for our lives. But what God wants to speak to us tonight is exactly this, that we need to have a preparation, but to know one thing, the moment of the trial, we need to exercise our faith. We cannot be afraid. We cannot allow the things of the world, the difficulties of the life may come and steal from us the focus, steal from us our guarantee that our names are going to be called so that we can live eternally with God. So there is another gift here that says the following. I saw a man in a small boat. He, the boat has a, a small hole, but the water was already entering to the boat, and the water was entering and was, was causing the boat to be heavier, causing the boat... The weight of the water that entered into the boat caused this man to be afraid already because there was a hole in the boat that allowed the water to enter. And, and it was at the end, he saw a great boat and he pointed the, his boat to this larger boat and he was able to, was able to reach this larger boat. He was safe and it was in the sea, the water was entering, and for sure, he was afraid of sinking, what am I going to do? But he saw a larger boat coming and came to him, and he was rescued. And this speaks of salvation, Jesus. We all are living our lives. It's like if we were a little boat on the sea, right? Servant God, each one of us, is like if we, we were above the waters, like the disciples here. But the trial, the weight of sin, and the disobedience, the sin of all this that we do, this causes us to want to sink. Why? Because the word of the Lord says that the wage of sin, the wage of the disobedience, and the the war, it were word of the, the man that does not seek the Lord is that the free gift of God is eternal life, is salvation, it's a larger boat. It's a larger boat that always comes to help us and take us out of difficult moments. So, my brethren, this is a word from the Lord. What you have gone through, exercise your faith, the moment of doubt, in the moment of adversity, the moment in you were going through, where you think you're alone. Look, remember one thing. The Lord is always with us. For the moment you accepted Jesus as Savior of your life, you are no longer alone. 
And you know one thing, the resources are always there at our disposal. You just need to open up your heart and seek the Lord and allow the Lord to control our boat, control our lives. Amen. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord and afterwards you're going to hear a song. Any brother and sister can pray, open up the microphone and pray. Lord, we want to glorify your name and praise you, Lord, because your care has been great towards us. We praise you, Lord, because you have taught us, Lord, to have more faith, have, has, have helped us in our daily lives. That's why we praise your name because of your favor, because of your care, because of your greatness, Lord. We praise the Lord for your word that entering to our hearts. We praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, my brethren, it's very soon we are going to be taken to heaven. In order for us to go, we need to leave the gospel that the Lord has given us, using the means of grace, the resources that we have, and our destination is eternity. Amen. Let's finish our service then. Let's close our eyes. The ones who can, can stand up and you can remain where you are. But God, at this moment, we, once again, we want to thank your name, praise your name, Lord, for yet another opportunity that was given to us of being in your house, of being, Lord, offering this service to you, Lord. Lord, we praise you for the resources that were given to us that has being given to us, we thank you for the assistance that was given to us, 
praise the Lord for the provision, for the sustenance, for our health, our physical health as well as our spiritual health. Lord, we praise you because to this day you have helped us. We have not lacked your powerful hands giving us direction and showing the direction, the right direction of our victory. And now in glorification to your name, we ask that you may receive this service in adoration to you, and that you may give us a night of rest in your presence, visiting, Lord, our lives with dreams, and that your angels, Lord, may come towards us, bringing the words from the part of the Lord. We know, Lord, that the angels, they are simply messengers of the Lord, sent by you, Lord, and that they may bring the answers to our prayers, and that they may bring from the part of the Lord the healing, the health, Lord, the eternal life. Receive our adoration. With the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen, my brethren. I've come to the end of yet another service. We thank the presence of the brethren, all the ones who were with us, a few from Brazil, but I'm from Houston, Port St. Lucie, and it's great joy that we thank the participation of everyone. It seems as though there are a couple of businesses that are opening, a few stores and a few things, but in any case, we are not going to return to the services yet. We will receive instructions from the Lord as well as instructions from, from the authorities, from the state authorities as well as the city authorities. Or So until we have the okay of everything, we'll continue with the service, the virtual service. Amen. Everybody continue watching the service in Brazil and participating. We've had many message, wonderful messages, revealed messages, and the more teaching we have, the more food we, spiritual food we have, the better it is for us. Today is the birth of whom? The birth of? You can open up a microphone. Is anyone turning, having their birthday today? No, right? Oh, okay. Oh, the brand from Brazil who are here. I see the mother of Lacaison. She's here with us. Mrs. Creuza. Pastor Joseph is here with us. Amen. The mother, the mother of Renata. Mrs. Marlene, she's here. Very good. Kez, welcome here. It is easier for you to introduce your friends. If there is, uh, if you have a relative, a visitor. Very good. Peace of the Lord, Mr. Cleus, and all the brethren from Brazil. It's a joy to have you with us. Renata. Send my greetings to you. We're praying for you. Pai do Senhor, 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 Pai do Senhor,